second. Okay. Can you see me now? <laughs> yes, we can. It's nice to meet you. I don't think we've met before. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Thanks for joining in. I think this is great when you guys can get an idea of who your upcoming trainers are. It's nice to put a face with it. Do you know Gina? Have you met her before? No, I haven't. So I'm super excited. I just think this technology is so cool. It is. <laughs> it makes my job a lot easier instead of having to fly all over Texas to get, get a hold of people. Now, where are you? I'm in uh, outside of Philadelphia. Okay. Got it. Gina, we are ready when you are. Danielle and Ruben are kind of on a tight uh, time schedule, so I want them to get to see as much of you as possible. Okay, well, we can begin. Let me pull this up. I know you're a teacher. You're good at switching gears really fast. So. I'm trying. I'm trying. I had to kick my kids out of class. I was like, y'all go. <laughs> <laughs> Got things to do. Stay <laughs> on. Okay, um, let's see. Take your time. I don't want to frazzle you too much. Okay. No, I'm ready. Let me make sure my PowerPoint... Back at the top. Okay. All right. I can go whenever. Okay. So this is Gina. Thank you for coming to the workshop. We appreciate you being here. Um, she is awesome. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to welcome you all to PCA's Double Goal Coach Workshop. Thank you so much for being here. Um, you may be like me when I first discovered the Positive Coaching Alliance. Um, about five years ago, I had some mandatory training through my district that I had to complete um, and it was actually an online PCA workshop and I knew nothing about the Positive Coaching Alliance. Um, my district only offered the online training um, and even still it piqued my interest. Now there's something to be said about these live workshops. It adds a whole nother element, um, much more interaction um, and just learning from each other and you know the experience that we have in this crowd alone um, is overwhelming I think so I hope we, we can definitely learn from each other, but I, I didn't have that opportunity at that time. So I'm sitting there on my computer um, completing my training and I grab a pencil and I grab some paper and I start taking notes like crazy. Uh, um, it was unlike any other mandatory wish I was in my classroom getting ready for the beginning of the year training that I'd ever done. Um, and I, I think most of you can relate to that. <laughs> um, you've all been in those kind of training. Um, and so later on even after the workshop itself was over um, I started doing some of my own research I looked into the Positive Coaching Alliance I, I found uh, some of their books and um, we'll be referencing the power of double goal coaching um, today in this workshop and um, I looked on the website and they had all sorts of videos and articles and, and resources from famous people. I was like, wow, I know these people. I've heard of these people, you know, um, and I just was kind of tying it all together. Um, and, and not just resources for me as a coach, but um, for parents, for athletes, um, for administrators. So I, I was fascinated. Um, and I think, you know, no matter where you are um, in, the, in the audience, I think that covers one of you. So <laughs> there, there can be resources out there for anyone. I'm a varsity assistant, a basketball coach, and a sub-varsity uh, volleyball coach at Byron Nelson High School, go Bobcats, uh, in the North Fort Worth area. Uh, I've been coaching for 14 years, mostly in the DFW area. I've coached middle school and high school. Um, I want to be a head coach, and so this training that I went through um, really opened my eyes to a whole new world of coaching that I felt um, would, would just benefit me and even the people I was around. Um, and so before I begin, I kind of want to know who you are, and so I, I told you this would be interactive, so I'd like to see how quickly we can get um, a small group introduction going. And so first, I'd like you to line up along the back wall, um, and I want to go by years of experience. So if you're a rookie beginning coach, I'd like you to line up on this end and all the way to a veteran with the most experience along this end and, and see how quickly we can form online based on experience and I'll give you a few seconds to do that and go and then give them a few seconds and good job I think y'all are all there that's so quick uh, and I'll bring you back in five four three two and one so now that we've got a good line going I want you to introduce yourself and hopefully we've mixed you up so you're gonna find some people that you don't know and I want you to find out four things I want to know um, where they're coaching what they coach, how long they've coached, and what they hope to get out of today's workshop. Um, and so I want you, I'll give you two minutes to talk about that. And then once they do <clears throat> talk, 
then I'll bring them back and they can go ahead and sit back down. Uh, and then um, I may kind of do some, I, I just do a couple uh, pullouts of, of what they want to, you know, out of a couple people what they want to get out of the workshop. I think that's always interesting, especially if they have no um, idea maybe, uh, just to kind of hear their, um, where, where their head's out at the beginning of the, of the workshop. Um, so I think no matter where you are in your coaching career, and when we get down to it, we all want to do our best, and we want to be our best. But but how is that, you know, everlasting question? Um, in my opinion, if we coach a little better every day, every practice, every year, you know, that's what PCA is all about. It's it's giving parents, athletes, coaches, and leaders some great resources to just be better. Um, and that's that's our motto: better athletes, better people. So before we begin, the principle that I'm going to talk to you, the, the last principle for today, um, I'm going to say a word, and I want you to just, just shout out the first words that come to your mind, or the first thing that comes to your mind when you hear the word sportsmanship. Integrity. Character. Integrity. Character. Role modeling. Okay. Respect. Okay. Playing fair. Uh, Umpires, referees. Okay, great. Winning with class, losing with dignity. Um, so all of these, all these different words, and that's going to lead us into our next principle um, that we call honoring the game. Uh, and I am on slide 25 of the PowerPoint. Okay. And so I want you to look at this picture. Um, and does anyone recognize this picture? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, we're going to watch this video, and I won't play the video, but um, we'll pretend to play the video. Yes. Um, and uh, I would ask after the video is over, um, well, what do you think? Why are acts like this so important in sports? Does anyone want to kind of try to answer that question? Why are acts like this Mallory moment so important in sports? I just think because they're not the norm. It's not what most kids would do, and it, 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 takes, it takes the whole um, pressure of the situation just out of the picture, and those girls just did what they thought was right, and that's unique and rare, unfortunately. So I yeah. think that's why it was so well, special. Unfortunately, that it is unlike what we should see. <laughs> Anyone else? Yeah, I think it's important because I think that sports um, can teach, uh, as, as well as teaching... Uh, good life lessons. I think sports can teach bad life lessons mm -hmm. and I, I guess that's kind of what, what Kelly was talking about. That, uh, you know, we see and you read and hear a lot about these pretty negative examples and, and they're, they're sometimes uh, people that we and our, our kids really look up to. So I, I think it's, it's, it's great to have these, these positive examples of what um, healthy competition Exactly. You like. And even though we can use um, some of those negative behaviors, you know, as a teaching moment, it is good to have some very um, tangible examples um, that are very famous and that w win an SB um, that are that are good and positive for our athletes also, and, and for the coaches too. Um, so as we're going through this last principle, I just want you to start thinking about this question. Um, what can I do over the next season to exhibit this type of behavior, uh, like like this Mallory moment um, that that honors the game? And I want you to think about that as we go into this next um, principle. So we're talking about taking sportsmanship to the highest level, and we call that honoring the game. So let's go back to principle one, which was our elm tree, and. Um, my question, how do those elm trees stay grounded? So we had some tornadic activity up here in North Texas today, um, and these Texas winds and rains and storms, how does that tree stay grounded? Through its Danielle roots. would know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> through its roots for sure. you got to get grounded to go up. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, and and the, the depth of the roots and the width of the roots, and um, we say honoring the game gets to the roots of positive competition. So the roots are holding your team together, and that's the culture you're going to create. So we're going to talk about five uh, key areas in honoring the game. And let's see. 
There we go. And um, I don't know what slide this is in, but maybe 20. We know. That's okay. Keep going. We're good. I'm sure you've seen it before. Just a couple times. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I just kind of want you to guess that this is an acronym that stands for uh, that that we're going to use the roots for this root system of honoring the game. So what might the R stand for in our roots system? Respect. Great. That's a great one. Anyone else? We're close. Referees. Okay, now we're going to use that one in another type, in another one of our um, letters in just a minute, so I'll hold that thought. Rules. Okay, great. And uh, Kelly, I'm going to go ahead and put respect for rules. So you were right on. Um, all of these are respect. So respect for rules. We want to, so our R is rules. We want to win in the way the game is supposed to be played. So it's not enough just to honor the letter of the rule, but the spirit of the rule. Can anyone give me an example in their sport um, where we honor the spirit of the rule, not just the letter of the rule? I think just um, I, I coach lacrosse, girls lacrosse, and there's offsides calls all the time that get missed, and I've had players that have actually called themselves offsides. Yeah. And it's shocking to me to see a 12-year-old admit that I'm offsides, that goal shouldn't count. That's right. <laughs> anyone else maybe from a different sport? I always love it whether it's in well wrestling or football or basketball. If someone gets knocked down, the opponent you know helps them up, you know yeah. whether it's a foul or not. Exactly. Yes, uh, and that's a a good one to teach also. All right. So um, great examples. Um, we're going to move on and talk about the, our first O in the root system. Um, what might that O stand for? Opponents. Okay, respect for opponents. Um, without an opponent, there's no game. There's no competition, right? Um, we can't be challenged to do our best if we don't have anybody to play against. Um, and uh, I love this, this quote. I'm going to say it's a quote from the Positive Coaching Alliance. Uh, a worthy opponent is a gift. Okay, the other team is not our enemy. And we can be fierce competitors but still respect our opponent. Um, fierce and friendly, we like to say. Um, and this might be a major uh, culture shift for some of our athletes, um, you know, because I, I hear coaches kind of approach the other team um, the opposite of this sometimes. So it, I think it's a great way to give our um, athletes into looking at the other team. In fact, uh, one of the games we played earlier on this season, um, it was kind of one of those situations that was a lopsided score, and we were, we were winning. But after the game, you know, you shake hands, and our girls were coming by, and the other team, um, they just lost by 20 or 30 points, and we were shaking hands, and they started complimenting our post player. And they're like, you're the strongest girl we've ever played against. And, I mean, it shouldn't have surprised me, but it really did, because I was like, wow. I was like, that's really what we do want to see, is after the game is over, after you've competed as hard as you can, to then recognize and honor and respect um, what the other team has just done, too. Uh, and so I, I, of course, really like that one also. So I think Ruben said it will go when he said uh, referees, but our next O is actually for the officials, respect for officials. I think this is everyone's favorite one, right? Mm -hmm. um, respecting officials. I'm going to add a caveat, though, even when they're wrong. <laughs> so, do officials make mistakes? Yes. yes. Absolutely. Um, but why do they make mistakes? They're not, they're I don't, human. exactly, they're, they're human. human. They're human. They're human. Exactly. <laughs> we make coaching mistakes, our athletes are going to make mistakes, our officials are going to make mistakes. You know, that's just life. Um, and so how can we, I think, with this, um, uh, part of honoring the game, how can we disagree with the call in a respectful manner? Uh, and so that's kind of what we want to model um, not only for our coaches but um, for our athletes, kind of, um, and almost prepare them ahead of time. We know the officials are going to make a bad mistake, and it might be a, a huge game changer, um, but once it's done, what can we do? How are we going to respond to it? And, and we can create those mistake rituals that we talked about in the Elm Tree of Mastery um, for 
uh, right after official makes a bad call or something, what are you going to do? Shake it off, brush it off, bounce back, move on. Um, and not only for our athletes, but maybe for ourselves too. And, uh, and we'll get to uh, that in a minute. So I'm going to come back to that. Uh, and slow me down if you think I'm going too quickly. Uh, but the next, we're going to move on to um, the T in our roots system, and it's respect for teammates. Uh, and we say here at Positive Co at the Positive Coaching Alliance, never do anything on and off the court or on and off the field to embarrass our teammates. And uh, this might be one of the hardest ones because what I like to include in teammates are the parents, the coaches, the administrators, and not only just the athletes as teammates themselves. And it, it, you know, if we look at it as that whole unit. Um, you know, this one might be a little bit more challenging to to create that respect, even if you don't agree with what the coach is doing. Even if you, you know, when it gets hard and you're not winning, how do we still have respect for each other as teammates? Um, and so we'll 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 get into that too in a minute. So our, the S of our root system is respect for self, and um, you know, this one might be the one that you have to have first in order to have respect for anyone else you have to have that respect for yourself mm -hmm. and so individuals with self-respect would never dishonor the game because uh, they have their own standards that they want to live up to um, and so you know maybe um, I think maybe especially with our athletes it's easy it, you know they can see okay I, I can see how I can respect the officials better I can see how I can respect my opponents but then they're beating themselves up, and a great question to ask would be, hey, would you ever say or would you ever treat your teammate like you just treated yourself? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think when you're looking kind of in the mirror like that, they're like, oh, wow. No, of course, I would never say that to my teammate. I would never say that to um, someone else. Then, then why, why, would you, why are you doing that to yourself and kind of, um, kind of looking at that uh, creating that kind of culture um, in respect for yourself and honoring honoring yourself. So I said a um, while ago, the roots, the system um, that's holding your team together is the culture you create. And culture is the way we do things here. And, and I love this. As I said, I want to be a head coach, and I, I feel like this um, helps me in – in looking at building a program or anything else when uh, no matter what they've done in the past then it's uh, what we're going to do now what we're going to do here um, and, and we can change and we can look at it a, di a different way so I do want to look at it and I want you to turn to page 46 and on page 46 there's um, honoring the game toolkit and um, I love it because it's not just tools for coaches, but tools for athletes, tools for parents, um, and also sorts of really good um, tools for this honoring the game. Let's look at page 46. We said a while ago um, maybe we can practice. Um, you know, once an official does give a bad call or something, we can practice our own self self control routine, and so that's the uh, first part on page forty six. So um, that's an example. I was just going to say that's an example of some of those tools that are in uh, the uh, the tool tool. I'm sorry, I, I got kind of off side. Okay, so. I want to give you a chance. I've talked too much. I've talked too quickly. I want to give you a chance to talk with each other now. So I have um, all of the letters in our root system on the back wall um, in different groups. And um, I want you to think about uh, which part of this honoring the game that you think your team is most challenged with. So I'm going to have you split up and go to those letters or go to that letter that you think your team is most challenged with and take a few minutes to share your story and you know why do you think your team finds it so difficult to respect the officials or to respect your teammates and then I want you to kind of brainstorm together and um, 
figure out a drill or something you can do in practice or, or maybe a team bonding that you can do um, that's going to help you uh, overcome that challenge. And I'll give you two minutes and then you're going to share one great idea from each of uh, the letters. So I would give them maybe a couple minutes, more than, you know, maybe two or three, depending on conversation. Um, but be, and, and then they would share out in their different groups. Um, but, and then I would want them to do this, because I, I think this is um, an interesting way to, to kind of finish it up. Um, before we go back to our seats, now I want you to think about which area are you most challenged with? Is it the same one that you said with your team? Or maybe it's a different one. And I want you to move and go to that part of the root system um, that honors the game. And discuss your challenges, your personal challenges, and how can you brainstorm with each other, with these other coaches that may have some good examples, um, some ways to create respect in that area. I'd give them a few more minutes to do that. I think that's a good way to end it. Um, and then <clears throat> when I bring it back, I, I, would, I would kind of finish it off and say, you know, if we don't intentionally teach our culture, someone else will. And, and that's, that's scary. Um, and I, I want you to remember my question from earlier. Um, what can I do this season to exhibit this type of, of behavior that honors the game? Oh wow, that was almost perfect. Um, <laughs> and I, I want, uh, what can I do and what can my athletes do or my parents um, or my other coaches that I'm responsible for um, to exhibit the type of behavior that honors the game? Mm -hmm. Now that would actually be a little bit longer because I didn't give time to for responses or anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, but you also had your intro in there. So I think, right, right. I think it was fine. I think you're... Okay. Yeah, I mean, you probably would have gone another five minutes if you would have elicited all the responses, like okay. you said. But I think I think you were good, Ruben. I know you have to go in six minutes, so I'd like you to start first with Gina. You did a nice job. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Gina. I thought I thought you did a, another really nice job. Um, in fact, I think the, all your performances have been strong. I think this was was the strongest. I'm just going to rattle through some positives. The yeah. open was good. I like the immediate reference to the power of double goal coaching. A book, mm -hmm. um, and I like the fact that you came back to it um, uh, with the Roots toolkit, you know, yeah. and, and right. you know. So, um, gosh, your energy level, your excitement, you're having fun. I mean, I know you've heard that from us before, but again, it just it just stands out right away from the start. Um, I like the fact that you got us up and moving early with the ex, you know, least experienced to most experienced. Right. Um, when you did that, you, you, there were there were four things we were supposed to talk about, and I tried to write them down, and I could only get three, so it made me think. You know, if you tell us to talk about four things, uh, or you, you know, maybe it's not important that we talk about all four, but sure, um, sure. I, I I I was actually writing down the four things, and I got only could get three. So right. anyway, well, if that's a, by that, yeah. Maybe simplify. Maybe but simplify yeah, those instructions. Introduce yourself and, and then tell what you want to get out of the uh, workshop. And and I do think that some people come not really knowing what they want to get out of it. So, mm -hmm. you, you know, so that that's an interesting question. Um, okay. Uh, okay, just just a few more positives. I'm going to jump off. Um, I like your question uh, to the group. What comes to mind when you hear the word sportsmanship and how to throw things out? I like that. I liked all the questions you asked throughout. Um, I thought I thought you were very conversational. Didn't feel like a lecture. Okay, um, good. And yet, even though it was conversational, you sprinkled in periodically and appropriately some specific PCA phrasing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, fierce and friendly. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, and. and, and Yes, yes, specific PCA phrasing um, and, and specific pieces of, of the script I thought you were sprinkling in. I thought that was really well balanced. Oh, good. Thank um, you. Yeah, and then I, I, I think Kelly might give you some feedback on the root how uh, work uh Flow wise, so I'll let I'll let Kelly address that and give you okay. her opinion on that. So that's Wait, it, that Gina. Again? I thought it was great. I missed that. What did you say um, again? The 
you know the 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 time she 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 filled all the time uh -huh. and yet and and she was going to have us do the roots interactive exercise there where we go up to the r or the o uh -huh. you know so that's going to be more time uh -huh. and so yeah so in terms of, of is that realistic to, to mm -hmm. do it that way? Kelly, mm -hmm. I'll let you yep. address that. I know you, you you always do. So that's it. I've got to go. Thank you, Gina. All right, thank Congratulations. You. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Ruben. I just have a, a couple welcome. a couple more things to add. Um, not too much different than um, than what Ruben said, but I, I just I again I think you just seem so confident. Every time you do this, you're just more and more confident in the material. And I think that's one of the reasons some people say like gosh, you have them do this three times. They do it for E-Tank and then they do it for practice and then they do it again. And, yeah. and I think it, there's really a lot of value to it because the more you do it, the more it becomes part of you and you don't have to sit there and go, um, what's the word, fierce and friendly? I mean, it's just, it's like anything. You know, you just have, it's, it's repetition, it's practice. Right. And I think for you, um, you know, you can definitely tell that you're starting to take ownership in this stuff and the words are just popping into your head. You don't have to think about it anymore. I know what mm -hmm. this means. So I think that's, that's fantastic. I love, I love your style. I think, um, I just, I think, it's interesting because you are a teacher and we've got a lot of teachers in this course. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the teachers in this course, my biggest critique is that this is not a classroom, it's a workshop. Right. And I think a lot of teachers, it's hard to get out of that mode of, I have this information, I have to vomit it to all my students, they have to learn it, and then they have to go out and change. So I think you do a really nice job at using a lot of the teacher skills of getting everybody engaged, good question strategy, purposeful learning, but you're getting us involved too, because I think that's one of the most impactful things that we can do. We're not trying to teach a class, we're trying right. to change a culture. And right. the only way that culture is going to change is if the participants feel emotionally connected, they feel pain, so there's some kind of a pain somewhere in what they're doing, and, right. and they have easy, practical ideas to change it. So I think you hit all of those areas really, really well. Good. And it's not easy to do. Um, every single workshop that I do, I always ask them, what do you want to get out of this? What's your okay. hope? And sometimes if you ask right away, you know, what do you want to get out of this workshop? They're like, I don't know, it's required. But okay. if you think, and you even said it, like what are some, I always say, what are some of your challenges you're facing this season? Okay. Um, if it's in the middle of the season or the beginning of the season, because right there, that gives them a purpose for being there. But number two, it helps you as the facilitator. If you start mm -hmm. hearing parents, 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 then you know that even though parents are not specifically a huge you know, tool that we talk about in the Double Goal Coach Workshop, mm -hmm. it's, it's something you want to bring up in the scenario. Or you right. want to make sure that you, when you talk about culture, you talk about parents are also involved in creating mm -hmm. the culture. So mm -hmm. for okay. me, it helps me to focus on, okay, what are their biggest issues? And as you said, like you would, you would do a couple pullouts and ask for answers. I always do ask okay. for answers for that. And I even sometimes, if I have a board there, I'll jot them down. Because mm -hmm. then you can go back and say, oh, now we're going to be talking about emotional tanks. Remember when you said kids being motivated is a problem? That's one of your challenges. Here's a way that you can help. Um, this is the way I can help you. So it's just, I just think it's a really, it's a great way to get them focused. Um, I actually had another trainer that said to me the other day, she was having trouble at a little league workshop at getting the coaches to answer, to, to actually like answer questions. She was right. throwing out all these questions and they were just dead in the water. And it was a Sunday night at 7.30 after a long weekend. And right. I said, did you ask them why they wanted to be there or what they wanted to get out of it or what some of their challenges were? And she said, no. And I said, well, think about that. If they're sitting there thinking they're gonna be shoved information rather than mm -hmm. saying, what do, I, why do I, what do I wanna get out of this? And mm -hmm. that's one of the things I say is this is a workshop. Work requires force, work requires effort, work requires movement in order to be called work. So um, I need this from you. So I think, I think you did a nice job with that. Um, I love when you said, like I just love the way you framed officials. I thought that was great. The way, you know, the whole time, the, the whole point of respecting officials is that they mess up. And so right. many people talk about like it's important to respect officials. But you got to the why. You know, it's important because they're going to be wrong. They're going to make mistakes. The caveat mm -hmm. is, can you be respectful even when they are making a mistake? Like, I think it's great to just frame it all that way because okay. that's that's the pain. That's where it hurts, and that's where people are like, Ugh. and a lot of coaches will say, "Oh, that's my biggest challenge." Oh yeah, well, yeah, because you're right and they're wrong. <laughs> and how do you handle that? And how do you? And you also use the word model it. You know, how are you going to model it? So, I thought you did a really nice job on that. The referencing the book was great. Um, the one thing that I think I maybe just to um, wordsmith it a little bit. Mm -hmm. The last thing you said was, um, you know, if we don't intentionally teach culture, someone else will. 
Right. I would be more specific or ask, who is that someone else? Okay, okay. Who's going to teach the culture if you don't do it? And okay. um, and one of the one of the facilitators, I can't remember who it was in this course, said, you know, who do you want? Who do you want enforcing your culture? Do you want your culture created by a bunch of twelve year olds, or do you mm -hmm. want your culture created by you, the coach and the leaders? Yeah. And the the culture that twelve year olds want is probably going to be a little different than the culture right. that you oh, want. Yeah. So just rather than being vague like someone else will, society will, parents will. Okay. Will. Yeah. So I, that that was probably the only area that. I, I said, you know, this is that was the only thing that kind of struck me is like, oh, make sure you're specific on who's going to create the culture. Okay. But I think you are well on your way, and I would love to see you go out and uh, and do a big chunk of the workshop. The first time out, we usually don't have you do the whole workshop beginning to end. Right. Uh, but I think I think you're ready to do it. I would just like you to see um, a lot. Have you been to a live workshop yet? No, and that's what I would I would like to go to one before I do one. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think you know it, it's kind of two birds with one stone. Like if you can go and just present part of the, like if you just want to do honoring the game, okay. I think that would be great so that you could really see how the trainer does it, how they frame it, how they get it, but then you're actually involved as well. Okay. Okay. Um, because I think, I don't think it's going to be hard for you to pick up. It's not, I mean, you're dealing with kids every day. So you know how to run a lesson, you know how to manage your time. That's the right. biggest issue is managing time, managing the crowd, get okay. asking good questions. You've got all that already in your skill set. Okay. So mm -hmm. there's nothing, like there's nothing that's going to, you're going to go, oh wow, this is such a revelation seeing this live. Right. You're already doing it. True. We okay. have tons of trainers that want to be PCA trainers that are just coaches. They have no teaching experience at all and no group facilitation experience and no public speaking experience. So mm -hmm. for those type of people, I say, yes, go out, watch what they do, watch how they question. I mean, it's almost like you have to teach people how it has nothing to do with the content. You have to right, teach people right. how to facilitate a crowd, right. which mm -hmm. you already have. So I would, I would feel great. I think honoring the game would be a great one for you to go out okay. and do um, with a certified trainer. Rather okay. than, you know, but I, I have confidence. I think you could do a whole workshop from beginning to end right now, but I wouldn't want you to do that since you've never seen one. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. So that's going to be my recommendation that, you, okay, um, awesome. that you're yeah. certified. We consider you an associate trainer. Sonia will be in touch. And okay. she will send okay. you, usually Monday morning, she sends out an email about workshops in your area. Okay. And let her know if there's any that you would be able to, to um, co-present. And, okay. uh, and we'll hook you up at a workshop and, mm -hmm. uh, and then get you, you know, try to get you certified. And it really, I mean, it is part of, Part of the certified trainer will say, you know, this is my feedback on Gina. I think she did great with this. I think she needs work on this. But the other half of it, too, like I look to you and say, how comfortable do you feel? Do right. you feel like you could do this on your own? And it's funny because a lot of times I'll have the certified trainer come back and say, oh, Gina's awesome. She could do the whole thing by herself. And then I would ask you and you'd be like, oh, not quite yet. I feel like I need some more practice. You know, it's funny. Usually you think that. The trainer person would say like, oh, no, I'm ready to go. But usually it's the opposite. We're harder right. on ourselves than other people are. Right, right. So, But I will. I'll ask for your feedback, too. And, you know, do you okay. feel like you could do this on your own, or do you feel like you want some more practice or whatever? Well, and I think the, the size of the group would, uh, you know, be, <laughs> uh, be a, a part of that also. You know, I and, and maybe um, where they're coming from. Like, I think – Maybe if it was a, a smaller group of coaches, I'd feel more comfortable. Um, I know you had talked earlier about the two other um, workshops that you can get certified in, the, the Second Goal Parent and mm -hmm. the Triple Impact. Mm -hmm. um, and, I, of course, with my, um, you know, with my goals in life, I, I would be very interested in going through those also, mm -hmm. kind of seeing how they're different and how, you know, the approaches on both of those um, and so I'd be interested in, in looking at those also. Sure. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, and that's one of the things we, we certify everybody in double goal coach one because it's the core, it's got all the principles. And then really it's a matter of just changing the perspective for parents okay. and okay. the athlete workshop is, is 99% high school athletes. So for mm -hmm. that workshop, it's more like, can that person handle talking to a group of athletes for over an hour? Right, and it's more. That's a lot of like classroom management, keeping them engaged. Sure. Oh, sure. It's all the same material. It's just can they? Okay. Handle it. Some people oh. just can't. Okay. So, um, but again, I, I don't think you'd have problem with with that at all. Right, right. So what we do is we certify you in the first one, and then if you get to the point where you say, you know, I'd really love to to do the parent workshop, or I'd love to do the athlete workshop, you would contact. Um, you're in Texas. Ruben would be your lead trainer once you become okay. certified, and you say, hey, can I? Can I start practicing um, this one? We don't have you go through a six-week course again okay. for the other workshops. It's more of just downloading the PowerPoint, reading the book, looking at the notes, and then you do a phone call and kind of walk through it. And we say, yeah, you seem like you're ready to go. Okay. All right. Is there a, a parent? Like I have the elevating your game, mm -hmm. uh, but is there is there a parent? Yes. Or? Yep. 
Yeah, there's a parent book. Um, it's uh, there's two of them actually. There's Positive Sport Parenting. This is the one, and then okay. there's um, the High School Sports Parent. So there's two different ones for a high school workshop or or youth workshop for parents. So we can get to those books as well. Yeah. So Sonia um, Sonia Dewitt is our trainer manager. She's like the coordinator of all things. Ruben and Eric and I are content. And she's kind of the coordinator of logistics. So um, I will send her a message and she's going to connect with you. Okay, great. Give you all the details about what comes next and what you need to do. Okay, great. Thank you yeah. so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I'm excited. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Right up my alley. So. Absolutely. Well, we're glad to have you on board. All right. Well, thank you. Thanks, Gina. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.